those that left the brethren were separating from the vile. Get it? So you've got 55,000 people who are, are identifying with the position. Well, has it become Laodicean? Just be honest, ask the question. This man is genuine. Um, it speaks of um, at Horsham in 1960 you stated that believers not in fellowship are in the same position as wicked persons withdrawn from according to 1 Corinthians 5 lepers and swine it is completely contrary to the truth it is completely contrary to grace. It completely ignores the matters of sovereignty, light, conscience and responsibility. The idle sophistry of such a pharisaic secretarian outlook is obnoxious to God. Such remarks help no one but expose the kind of man who utters them. But the waters that emerge from that sluice gate are all of one kind. The Christians whom you speak of as in system not one in a hundred would for a moment stoop to do the things which, to your abiding shame, are the order of the day in the exclusive brethren. Then he cites an example. Four years ago, a sister in the Midlands wrote to her local brethren and said, I can give you a copy of the letter if you want. For many years, I've been profoundly disturbed by the way many of the exclusive brethren have spoken of other Christians in a derogatory way, implying that we are the only people, the others counting for nothing in God's sight, as they seem to be in ours. It is my considered opinion that the present disintegration of the exclusive brethren is a direct result of this. I feel that God in his anger is breaking us up because of this and will continue to do so, scattering us abroad, etc. The dear sister was withdrawn from a few days later for railing. How good is that? And I mustn't go on, just, just at the end, just at the end of the letter. Um, does God expect unquestioning acquiescence in and obedience to everything that a leader, however supreme, presumes to bring out in his ministry and which he claims to be the voice of the Spirit? The answer is clearly no. Yet hundreds were, hundreds were withdrawn from on that ground. One can but be amazed at the gullibility of the brethren in acclaiming everything you say as the present voice of the Spirit, while at the very time Gerald Cowell's ministry, which is spiritual and precious, was not only said to be satanic, but those who would not admit that were withdrawn from. Is there not something repugnant to every right-minded believer in the pharisaical suggestion that a common entrance to a block of flats or a common staircase or a lavatory becomes unclean if it is shared by those not in the fellowship. How long will such follies last? Well, just look at how extreme that has become. Look at the, uh, uh, during Simonson's time and John Hales's time, uh, you couldn't share drains uh, with other people that owned the drain. You couldn't share shit in that sense. A uh, brethren cut semi-detached houses down the middle so there was an air gap. Literal separation. Pylons were diverted around brethren sites. Uh, electricity wires. <laughs> separation in literal physical form is crazy and in fact this is also crazy. I hope the brethren are convicted. Brothers like uh, who are responsible need to step up. Dear James III, son of JT Jr. in New York, he just needs to be a man, face up to the truth. Yes, he went to rescue, if that's the right word, his father from Aberdeen. Uh, but uh, I think he rescued his father from his father's own situation, if the truth be known. But he's had to spin. In, 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 
adherence to the system, the testimony, the position, and the leaders, and Simonton and co, he's had to spin the story to make it sound that Jim Taylor was the perfect leader. Uh, just be real, Mr. James III, I enjoyed coming to New York. You had me take you on two readings. In fact, <laughs> uh, when David Patterson asked me to take about the fourth meeting on the trot. I said, this is ridiculous, I'm not a... I, but he said, well, the young people enjoy it so much, so we want you to go on again. So I did and took up mutuality. Uh, I listened to it. Um, I'm, I'm no minister, uh, but um, I felt moved to um, quote John Hales, I think I said in the meeting, uh, I suppose about 2013. Um, even he said, I can't understand two or three doing everything in the locality. The whole thing should be mutual. This universal leader, national leader, leaders in localities, hierarchy that have been planted in by the universal leader to do what he wants them to do is wrong. It's against the principle of the working of the body of the Christ, as set out in Paul's beautiful epistles. So um, get real, brethren. Uh, brothers like Don Druckenmiller, James III, who have taken meetings when Bruce Hales was there, uh, which is very rare indeed and happened in the early days of his, the early years of his leadership, uh, need to ask some questions. Uh, leaders in the UK, who, who was that? Garth Christie, John Rich, Jim Hazel, Garth Woodcock, Oliver Wiley, Tim Barter. So the list goes on. Just be real and stop, get off your pedestals and just become brothers amongst your local brethren and prove the beauty and wonder of the working of the body and we have, where we have need of each other. The head doesn't say to the foot, I have no need of thee, uh, but that's really what a hierarchy is doing. If you're in control of others, you're really demeaning them. Uh, that may be hard for you to accept, but to actually put up a wall of separation and say we are the church means that the rest of us are, as Jim Taylor said, rubbish. Well, we are real Christians. We've got, we have a right to have our link with the Lord. And I think great blessing could come out of uh, stepping outside your straitjacket and seeing the possibilities of merging with other Christians who may hold a slightly different view of the truth to yourself, but there's one truth. And uh, I think you should have the grace to look into the EB or PBCC truth and realize that it went off the rails at the time when Jim Taylor was established. That's Julia. It was a, largely a good religion. Uh, up until I would suggest towards the time when uh, JT Senior died. My father wouldn't have come in in 1950 if it had been a bad religion. He's a, that, that, that was a result of a lot of exercise. But there's so many people in there now who haven't had any exercise. Uh, they've come in, they've been born into it. They don't even have to commit their loyalty announce their loyalty to Christ in assembly these days, like we used to have to do when we were 12 or 13 or whatever it was in the old days. So make sure that Christ is reigning supreme in the hearts of the brethren, not you or any other leader, uh, because there's a danger that you'll become idols, enforcers, controllers, authoritarians, dictators in the eyes of the congregation. Surely you don't want that. Not if you know Christ. If you do want it, it'll end up in the wrong place anyway. So I'm just appealing gently and I hope effectively uh, to um, anybody in a leading position, uh, anyone that's hurt anybody or withdrawn from anybody or had any part of it, which really is the whole position and I include myself, um, to change from being a, a, a punisher to being a forgiver because of the 
glory of the finished work of Christ on the cross. 2020, two, three, four, five years ago, or whenever it was. Thank you.